Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. Sometimes the best way to find a living is to stay right where you are and study with UAS online. Career-specific distance programs from the University of Alaska Southeast are the fastest way to increase your earning power. We connect all over the world. The National Weather Service. Hello everyone and thanks again for joining us for this Friday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy. Uh, warning wise, we've got a high wind warning out for the Juneau Douglas area beginning late tonight and continuing through uh, the day tomorrow for uh, winds increasing in, with gusts above 60 miles per hour out of the northeast. And then uh, also later on, I believe into actually uh, Sunday, there's a uh, winter storm watch out for snow of six to 11 inches there, again in the Juneau Douglas area. And that's about it as far as warnings and advisories go here around the state. Uh, satellite imagery yesterday showing some moisture, actually big high pressure area shifting westward from what it was earlier on here in the Bering Sea. South flow on the west side of that, up and over the top, dropping uh, varying amounts of mid and high level moisture southward into the interior. On back, another surge coming onto the western Arctic coast tomorrow. Otherwise, dry and mostly sunny here across southern Alaska, Copper River Basin, down across the Panhandle, looking really good. And uh, frontal activity still held back to the west over the uh, Bering Sea and the Aleutians and everything out that way heading due north. And then we'll see today, uh, same sort of situation, uh, lifting northward, this area coming eastward here, and a uh, band of snow along with it there for the western Arctic coast down to about uh, St. Lawrence Island, just talking really light flurry conditions there, and that uh, shifting eastward there to the central Arctic coast. And another thing here over the, uh, well actually extending from the eastern Beaufort Sea coast down into the interior. Areas of light snow with that there across the Brooks Range all the way down to the Alaska Range. And then south of there, just mostly mid and high level clouds here across Cook Inlet back over to the Alaska Range. Really nice here, uh, Kuskokwim Valley all the way down to Togiak Island, even up to Nunavak Island there. Nice conditions out over the Bering Sea as well as the Aleutians. Uh, real lack of storminess out there as high pressure dominates Kodiak Island. Light winds north Gulf Coast uh, for the most part, especially in the marine areas. And then uh, still windy over in the northern panhandle there. But uh, clouds right along the coastline there. Otherwise dry conditions south to about Dixon Entrance. Then you start picking up some moisture uh, near the Queen Charlotte's. This area cloudiness advancing northeastward there. And uh, actually it's going to be that pattern that brings... Uh, the moisture, wind, rain, snow into the uh, panhandle Saturday night and on Sunday. Uh, let's see, today's analysis showing uh, strong high pressure still over the Yukon there with the gradient keeping it windy over the northern panhandle, less wind down to the south, and then slight snow here with this band of moisture, mostly from about the Alaska Range northward across the uh, greater Fairbanks area on up uh, to the eastern coast. A cold front here bringing the areas of light snow 
Nothing significant with it. Maybe some uh, winds kicking up to about 30 miles an hour in gusts. Otherwise, big area high pressure here north of the Perbolovs, keeping winds light and conditions dry over much of the Bering Sea. You can see a lot of clearing there from the Perbolovs on down to the uh, Fox Islands and Alaska Peninsula. Uh, pretty nice out here over the western interior, actually eastward there along the North Gulf Coast and Prince William Sound. And southeasterly flow, bringing a little bit of uh, rain and some fog into the far western Aleutians, uh, reported at Chimia mostly earlier today. For tonight, that uh, front in that southeast flow will actually keep pushing off to the northwest. A uh, very weak uh, front here could continue a chance of some light snow for St. Lawrence Island, northeastward here into Kotzebue Sound, uh, Selawig Valley areas, and then up across the Brooks Range to the eastern Arctic coast there. Look for some periods of light snow breaking out to just some flurries or light snow showers back to the west. And the interior, uh, that area of snow, uh, really dissipating here, kind of lingering. Could be some flurries over the extreme western Susitna Valley, mostly up along the mountains, nothing really significant. Just variable clouds, south central Alaska, as well as the Copper River Basin areas, all the way back out to the southwest coast here. Very nice conditions continue. Light winds, dry, with a fair amount of clearing from the Alaska Peninsula, all the way out to the uh, central and western Aleutian areas. Risk, I mean a real risk of a light snow shower for the Cordova area, otherwise it's variable clouds. And again, uh, tightening gradient here over the southeast coast as this uh, system approaches, falling pressures, and again looking for that high wind warning to kick in uh, late tonight and continuing into tomorrow. And then for Saturday, low pressure here southwest of the Queen Charlotte Islands. That'll begin to increase the chance of uh, snow initially here over the southern pan. It could become mixed depending on how much warm air actually circulates northeastward with that. Otherwise to the north, quite windy and dry on the chilly side with uh, sunshine all the way up into the Copper River Basin, but less wind up in through here. Less wind also for the North Gulf Coast, Prince William Sound areas. And we still have that moisture that's currently sliding southward here. Uh, keep, keeping a chance of uh, some snow shower conditions there over the western Alaska Range, across Iliamna, Kachemak Bay, possibly Kodiak Island here, but again, that's just a risk. Most of this will be south of the Kenai Peninsula. Mostly sunny, light winds, chilly for the Bristol Bay area. No change for the Aleutians. Uh, very weak front up here with just some scattered areas of moisture right up to the southwest coast. A uh, weak trailing edge, bringing mostly clouds, possibly some light snow here over the uh, lower Yukon Valley from Norton Sound. A little bit uh, more widespread light snow or more continuous from the Koyukuk Valley northeastward there to uh, Kaktovik. Otherwise, flurries at times maybe along the Arctic coast, and that's about it with light winds back to the uh, northwest areas there. It could be mostly sunny for Kivalina on up to Point Hope. And the Aleutian is looking really good through uh, tomorrow. And then for Sunday, maybe a few isolated rain and snow showers out in that area. But basically still uh, high pressure dominating the entire scene out there. Uh, a few more clouds here, maybe some scattered snow showers, mostly uh, Bristol Bay and the Marine area. Possibly the Preblof, uh, Fox Islands and maybe the Alaska Peninsula, but uh, that's just a chance, otherwise uh, basically dry. But you will see an increase in the winds here, especially for the Fox Islands, northeast 30 knots possibly, a little bit uh, breezier here along the southwest coast. No change for south central Alaska at all, no change for the interior, maybe a few less clouds, and that's about it. And then the big change here for the southeast coast, uh, tomorrow night, that uh, moisture and uh, the front surges northward and by Sunday afternoon we'll be looking at a pattern something like this with the front right up across Prince of Wales Island. So rain over the southern areas, windy conditions, gale force winds out for Stevens or for Clarence Strait and the south coast there. Easterlies uh, possibly the gale force here for the central coast, but again snow spreading northward all the way up to White Pass and even into the Yukon there with the rain snow line gradually lifting northward throughout the day as well. And uh, but should possibly at this point in time probably be a snow for the uh, Juneau area, say, or from Petersburg on northward with that six to 11 inches in the forecast. And then again, scattered snow shower activity, mostly in the Gulf of Alaska, or it will all be there, but that could uh, slip on down and catch again Kodiak Island with a risk of some flurries, 
otherwise mostly sunny here for the southwest interior. Breezy conditions along the coast, as I mentioned, and then a few skiffs of snow, maybe a little continuous there for the eastern Arctic coast with uh, winds at about 20 knots out of the west there for the extreme east side. Light winds, maybe some mostly sunny skies, St. Lawrence Island right up to the northwest coast again for Kivalina. High pressure continuing to control the Bering Sea. And for temperatures this afternoon across the Panhandle, all in the 20s there with uh, 27. They're at Sitka, 29 Kowak, state capital at 27 this afternoon, pretty uniform all across the southeast coast and up to 32 at Yakutat, mid 20s to near 30 here for Prince William Sound and the North Gulf Coast, Seward 31, also up there at Talkeetna, but Palmer 25 degrees, Homer had 31, and lower to mid 30s here for Kodiak Island, Copper River Basin, Gulcana 10 degrees above zero, about that also at Northway, and uh, about 10 degrees there for the Tanana Valley. Again, areas of snow, clouds up in this area northward with uh, battles at six above. And 16, Fort Yukon, just one degree above zero there at Anatovic this afternoon. Pretty mild though along the Arctic coast, upper teens to uh, lower 20s there, the entire stretch of way up to 28 at Cape Lisbourne. And an 18 degree reading at Kivalina, 12 at Ambler, and then the Seward Peninsula here, 25. Shishmaref down to 10 at Nome, and kind of a variation here across the southwest, 21 in McGrath, just 12 degrees, Bethel back up to 21 at McCoriak. Out west, uh, near 40 for the uh, western central Aleutians with ADAC at 41, the warmest uh, location, 35 on Alaska, mid-30s for the Pribilofs, and uh, lower 30s drop into uh, actually the upper teens there toward King Salmon. For the lows tonight, uh, coldest here over the eastern interior, down to 30 below, maybe a tad colder than that. Otherwise, warmer than it was last night, where uh, minus 40 at least a toke was recorded. And lower teens there for the panhandle, maybe down to maybe 8 or 9 at the coldest. And then teens, to, or, uh, yeah, teens into the lower 20s, above freezing for the Aleutians. And staying above zero for the Arctic coast tonight, much of the north slope as well. And tomorrow back into the... Uh, mid-20s possibly, 20s to lower 30s here for the uh, west coast areas, upper 20s Bristol Bay, chilliest here along the eastern interior, and pretty chilly for the northern panhandle. As far as flying weather goes for tomorrow morning, uh, increasing moisture here slipping on up, so maybe some late tonight, some IFR reaching Prince of Wales Island, otherwise VFR across southern Alaska, the Bering Sea, maybe uh, possibly some marginal stuff for Atka. Much more widespread IFR there with that moisture in the front uh, from the northwest coast all the way down to St. Matthew Island and along the east side of the Brooks Range for tomorrow afternoon. Okay, for Anatovic, uh, marginal VFR and uh, that same forecast for Adigan there with the uh, moisture up to the north. Otherwise, VFR conditions for the western Alaska Range, Lake Clark Merrill, either approach VFR, rainy VFR as well. <clears throat> No change for uh, Isabel. Uh, VFR should stay VFR the entire day. It won't become marginal. And for Mintasta, we're looking at VFR conditions as well for Tanita. And Portage, VFR, wide open again for Chilkoot and White for tomorrow, but uh, definitely seeing a change coming in for Sunday. Into the afternoon could go IFR by that time. For the freezing levels, uh, cold air in place here, interior surface all the way down tomorrow morning late tonight, tomorrow morning to the Queen Charlottes, but this will all begin to advance northward starting tomorrow. And then the warm air aloft with the upper high pressure area out over the central Bering Sea up to about 6,000 feet, uh, cooler to the north, cooler to the south. And then for icing, not really a lot out here to the west, none to speak of at all for the Aleutians Bering Sea into the western interior. Possibly up here uh, a little more moisture above about 2,000 feet of the light rime variety from uh, actually the Koyukuk Valley under the northeast, and then with the increasing moisture here, that'd be the best chance of seeing any, probably the only chance of seeing any down across the extreme southern southeast coast to Dixon entrance. And the jet stream, upper level trough here near the southeast coast, northeast flow, 33,000 foot wind, 72 up to 100 knots across the Alaska Peninsula, strong upper ridge out here over the Bering Sea with west-southwesterlies up to 100 knots over the top of that coming onto the western Arctic coast. And then for 9,000 feet, again, big high pressure, Bering Sea, light winds. Westerlies at about 25 on the Arctic coast, 
much lighter through the central interior, but possibly a little brisker here over the southwest uh, Cuscombe Valley area, 30 knots right out to the coastline. Light northeasterlies for the Alaska Peninsula, North Gulf Coast, possibly as high as 20 knots. Increasing winds here across the southern panhandle uh, northward to uh, Lynn Canal and then for 3,000 feet, uh, 20 to 30 knot winds here, strongest along the south coast, lighter over the interior and definitely more variable. West northwest, uh, 15 to 30 knots to the Arctic coast, pretty light northerlies here along the west side and then 10 to 20 for the eastern Aleutians and those uh, may pick up to 30 knots out towards Shimia. So turbulence wise, uh, maybe a little bit of light to isolated moderate chop in Chitka Island on out to uh, Atu Island and along the southwest coast. Northeast flow, uh, mechanical turbulence, nothing really significant, maybe for small aircraft, occasionally light. That same pattern also along the Arctic coast there. And then uh, much bumpier conditions there across the panhandle with uh, Go for occasional widespread moderate chop, most areas uh, kind of splitting it in two here for the northern panhandle and on down to the south. And after uh, hangar flying, I'll be back to look at the marine forecast and the ice edge. Good afternoon. I'm Rocky Capozzi on behalf of Alaska Public Media and the Alaskan Aviation Safety Foundation. Welcome to hangar flying. Our guest this afternoon is retired UAA professor Michael Buckland. Michael served as a designated pilot examiner for 25 years. He has about 12,000 flight hours and about 2,000 of those hours are in seaplanes. He holds an airline transport pilot rating for both helicopters and airplanes. And at one time, Michael taught for American Airlines Flight Academy. Today, we wanna to talk about aviation safety. Now, Michael, aviation safety is a pretty broad topic and uh, it's hard to cover a lot in six minutes, but do you have any hip pocket flight safety rules that you try to live by? Yes, I do, Rocky. I think you can sum up aviation safety in three basic rules. One is um, don't hit nothing. Two, uh, don't run out of gas or you are about to hit something. And three, if you're that determined to hit something, try and find something soft and cheap to hit. <laughs> Okay, so obviously the Federal Aviation uh, Administration governs the way we operate airplanes. Uh, do you, in your estimation, do the FARs keep us safe? The aviation regulations are important and are useful, but regulations themselves never increase safety. What increases safety, Rocky, is compliance with regulation. And that's what good FAA inspectors are always focused on, is trying to create a culture of compliance. That's what good companies and good pilots are about, is seeking to uh, do what's wise and do what's right. Okay. So uh, what are some of the hazardous attitudes that tend to result in accidents? There's been a lot of really interesting scientific research to establish uh, what kind of attitudes put people at crash sites. Five of the uh, standard attitudes that are a problem. And interesting enough, they cause not only airplane wrecks, but they cause life wrecks. I've seen aviators wipe out useful, promising careers because of these. The first would be anti-authority, people who feel that no one can tell them what to do. Another would be impulsivity. It's kind of, hey baby, let's go to Vegas with an airplane. And um, if you make impulsive decisions that are poorly thought through, bad things tend to happen. Another would be invulnerability. People who feel that bad things really aren't going to happen to them, just to the uh, other person. Therefore, they can push the weather or push loading really excessively. Uh, another is resignation. And that is essentially just being passive and deciding that you can't influence the outcome of things. Lastly, you have uh, what they call macho, and that amounts to proving things with an airplane. I like to call it testosterone poisoning. And testosterone poisoning tends to result in what I'd call the rectocranial inversionary effect. <laughs> and that has produced quite a few bad accidents over the years in Alaska and elsewhere. So Mike, uh General aviation accident rates uh, steadily declined over a period of many decades, but the decline seems to have stagnated in the last 10 mm -hmm. years. Uh, in your opinion, has the GA accident rate reached the lowest level we can reasonably expect? 
No, I believe that by making good aeronautical decisions, we could probably cut it in half still. Uh, one of the reasons that it has declined, other than people being better trained and perhaps more judicious, is simply that there's less flying going on as flying has become more and more expensive. Mm, but when we talk about rates, we're actually talking about you know, numbers of accidents per 100,000 flying hours. In, in the we are, and the problem is for 135 and 121 uh, revenue operations, we have extremely detailed information, but for 91, we do rough estimates because there are no really good statistics. I see. So uh, one of the big um, movers for accident reduction in part 121, 135 has been uh, the topic or the practice of crew resource management. Uh, how does that apply to a single piloted GA airplane? Or do the well, principles apply? Crew resource management has made just revolutionary changes in airline safety. U.S. air carriers operating under major air carriers under Part 121 of the FARs. The last time they killed a passenger, Rocky, was February 9, 2009, Colgan, New York, where 50 people died. That now is over 100 million scheduled U.S. air carrier flights without a single passenger killed. It's remarkably uh, virtually superhuman safe. And when you're flying alone, you can use some of the same principles because you're never really alone. You have voices in the cockpit with you of the instructors that taught you to fly, of other pilots you've learned from. So we should always be listening to those other voices. Yep, I, I agree. Uh, so we, real quickly here, we got about 30 seconds. We've all memorized ceiling and visibility requirements for different classes of airspace. Mm -hmm. Are but they, they're not are they equal. equivalent? You hear about them together, but no. Uh, visibility is much more important to safety than ceiling, although both certainly are important. Also, with weight and balance, the balance can be much more important than the weight, although both certainly matter. Okay. Well, it's been great talking to you again this afternoon. We hope to see you again for a future session. Good afternoon and blue skies and tailwinds to all our viewers. Today's sea ice analysis uh, looks something like this, kind of retreating northward here over the last couple of days from what it was. And really no big changes are in the forecast here with, uh, for the ice conditions. Uh, any change will be, of course, out here along the edge itself with really nothing to the north. And then next week when the winds become more northerly again, should start seeing it advance southward. So moving on to the uh, marine forecast here, we've got uh, 30 to 35 knot winds out of the east here for much of the coastline, 25 in the extreme north coast, and gale force northerlies continue with higher gusts there for northern Lynn Canal with freezing spray and gale force winds down across uh, Stevens Passage, small craft advisories to Clarence Strait for those northerly winds, and then that's going to switch around and come up from the southeast and all the way up to gale force 35 knot winds there for the Clarence Strait area on Sunday. Same pattern here along the south coast, turning east 40 to northeast 35 as you go north here, and then northeast 25 for the north coast. 40 knot northerlies continue for Northern Lynn Canal. And for Prince William Sound, light winds from the north, same thing for Cook Inlet, 10 knots to 15 south of the Forelands, and then 20 knot winds from the north northeast here east side of Kodiak Island up to the western North Gulf Coast. For Sunday, uh, Northeast 10, Prince William Sound, Northern Cook Inlet, 20 knot northerlies here south of the Forelands, Kachemak Bay, all the way down to Shellacoff Strait, and pretty light winds here, Kodiak Island and the North Gulf Coast, North Northeast at about 15. And for Bristol Bay, Northeast 15, picks up to about 20 knots here on the Bering Sea side of the peninsula, otherwise Northeast 15 to 20 from, uh, Shishmer, or from uh, Cape Sarachev up to Sitkanak. Now, out to the uh, Sunday forecast, northerlies, Bristol Bay, only 15. Same thing here southwest of Kodiak. The Alaska Peninsula, northeast, 20 knots. For the Aleutians, uh, east, 25 here for the far western zone. Otherwise, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, northeast, 20 to 25 for the central Aleutians. And basically that same wind pattern across the Fox Islands with seas only five to seven feet. And then for Sunday, uh, at least 25, maybe 30 knot winds here on the north side of the eastern Aleutian areas. 
but all staying out of the northeast here, 20 to 25 for the central Aleutians, and not much change on out to the west with seas running uh, 11 to 16 feet out there, otherwise lighter to the east. And then for the uh, St. Lawrence Island area tomorrow, northeast at 10, northerly 20 knots for the southwest coast, northeast 20 for the Pervilofs. And Sunday's outlook, uh, north 15 knots there for St. Lawrence Island, southwest we're there to the St. Matthew zone, northeast 20 for the Pervilofs, all the way up to Cusacum Bay, a little lighter there, or actually north 20, north of Nunavak Island. And then for the uh, Beaufort Sea Coast, uh, brisk wind advisories on the east side there, Dropping back to 20 knots to the central coast, actually to the western coast as well. And then we're looking at lighter winds here from Wales to Cape Beaufort. And then for Sunday, light winds from Wales to Cape Thompson. Turn southerly, kind of a weak low off to the west there. Otherwise, westerlies here along the remainder of the Arctic coast in those zones at about 20 knots, give or take. And then for uh, tonight, um, High wind warning kicking in eventually there for the uh, Juneau and Douglas area with gusts increasing to 60 miles per hour or more late tonight into uh, tomorrow. And then some light precipitation possible that's uh, shifting southward here into the western Alaska range. Otherwise variable clouds. Looks like a little less snow for the Tanana Valley, but another batch rolling in with that front to the north there, which will weaken here back to the southwest coast. Uh, a little more continuous light snow farther to the northeast. Another nice day here across southern Alaska, lingering snow showers, increasing moisture down over the southern southeast coast, as well as increasing winds occurring there over the uh, northern panhandle. And then again, even more of a wind and rain and snow condition here with the rain south, snow north, and uh, could see six to 11 inches, continue dry over the interior. Have a perfect weekend. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.